torch in my hand. My name's Elon Hall, welcome to The Gorbals in downtown LA. We're big on taking things to ridiculous levels here at The Gorbals. It can be an out-of-body gastronomical experience. It can be sexual. Everything's based on having no rules and really having no boundaries. Today I wanted to really showcase how we can take a classic burger, do all the fixins and all the condiments that you would normally have, but then make that all from onions. It's one of those things where you walk into a room and you smell onion sauteing and butter or oil. You don't think of onions, you just think of delicious. This is a traditional way of dicing onion. You want to sort of cut it most of the way through, but leave it so that the structure of the onion is intact, because it'll give you a place to hold it, it'll give you a good place to slice it from. I remember having grilled onions when I was a kid. That's where I sort of fell in love with little tiny diced grilled onions. One of the secrets to grilling onions, especially when they're cut so small, you want to get color on them. You want them to be grilled, you want them to be charred, not burnt, but have a nice reaction. You really just want the outsides to be cooked and the insides to be almost raw. Just nice color, but still has a lot of texture. So... I always love the flavor of caramelized onion. You could put them on anything. We cook them until they're almost falling apart and melted. It's kind of stringy, so it mimics that cheese. Caramelizing a fruit or a vegetable is when you're bringing out the sugar to the surface of it. When your onions are caramelizing, they're gathering a lot of stuff at the bottom. We call it fawn in the culinary world. You just have a little bit of water on hand and add it intermittently. It's really gonna break up everything, everything's gonna melt, and then add that flavor back into the onion. The flavor of caramelized onions is unsurpassed. There's nothing that really matches it. Every burger needs a good crunch. Crispy shallots are really what can round this out and give you that texture and that crispiness. Shallot that's sliced thin, dusted in flour, and then fried until it's crispy. I don't think there's anybody on earth that doesn't like the little baby onion rings. We're really trying to exploit the onion and see everything that it can do. And also, we're not a bunch of shoemaker hacks and we make our own stuff here. We grind all of our meat in-house and we do 50% dry aged brisket, 50% fresh brisket. A little tip, you can use the back of a lid that's cut out. You can use a bunch of different things if you don't have one of these, but it's pretty straightforward and easy. And that's how you're gonna get even cooking throughout the entire thing. The secret, once you've got your burger in the pan, you don't wanna move it. You wanna let that char set in and be consistent so it's really forming a nice, solid crust on the outside. You gotta flip it. I use a fish spatula for using this. Flip it over, look at that. If you have something in the pan that's at the bottom, that could be the most delicious part of the entire dish. You need to make sure that you're not wasting any of it. The last touch that we've got on these grilled onions is to finish them off in the fat that's rendered out from the burger. And then I'm gonna just put them right on top of the burger and let them sit there until it goes on the plate. We've got a bun with an onion baked into it. By heating this in the pan where the burger cooked, where all of its juices and fat sort of seeped out of it, you're gonna get more of that, you know, continuing flavor through of the burger into the bun, into the onion. It's, it, it's a bridge to bring everything together. The idea of meat between buns is only the beginning of what a burger can actually be. We have red wine, red onion, marmalade that we use as the ketchup. Scallion aioli, which is our special sauce, Thousand Island. We've got caramelized onions, pickled red onions, fried shallots that are sort of our crispy bacon. They all have different textures and different flavors and different levels of sugar and salt that all meld together beautifully. So it looks wonderful, but it's missing one thing. One thing that could fit right here. I'm a big fan of fries. I take them very seriously. I felt like we just needed to do something left of center. If you cover them in braised pork and gravy and cheese and pickles, it transcends them. It makes them into something that you'd never think they could be. You're getting crispy, crunchy, pickly, salty, fatty, all in one shot. It's like a, an effect of dominoes hitting your tongue of different textures. Wow. I'm Elon Hall, and you're watching Star Chef Secrets on Tasty. Don't forget to click to subscribe. Next time you're at a Mexican restaurant, order the Escamoles. In English, that's ant larva. Learn more on why would you eat that. Want to up the ante on classic fried chicken and mashed potatoes? Just add cheese curds. Smash an episode of Taste Explosions together with Epic Mealtime, and what do you get? An explosion of epic proportions. Join Top Chef Kevin Gillespie in sampling the wildest bacon-wrapped hot dogs with toppings like cream cheese, scallions, and everything bagel seeds. Beer made from bull balls and grown men's beards? Get a taste of our version of food news on Food Beer. Watch Exotic Jess take on a live octopus in the appropriately named Why Would You Eat That Live Octopus Challenge.